Yeah, so leaving Fusion might have been a mistake. Let me explain. In one of my previous videos, I talked about how I was leaving Fusion for plasticity, and the reason why was because of performance issues and also pricing issues. So if I made $1,000 on Fusion in a year, then I would have to pay for a full subscription, which costs $680 at the moment. And on top of that, Fusion just wasn't running great on my computers anyways. So instinctively, I looked for a different software and after trying out, I don't know, maybe five or six of them, I came across one I liked, which was called Plasticity. It was the new kid on the block. It ran great on my computer and I could create designs in minutes that would take me hours in Fusion if I could even create them in Fusion at all. And on top of all that, plasticity didn't cost a fortune. It only cost 150 bucks and you got to keep the software. Granted, you only got 12 months of updates, but that was still a lot better than Fusion. So why am I saying it might have been a mistake I left Fusion? Well, there are some things that Fusion has that plasticity does not, and I do miss them. So that's what I'm going to share with you today so you can pick the right software that works for you. And before we hop in, I just wanted to mention that I'm not affiliated with Plasticity in any way. They haven't sponsored me and I paid for the software with my own money. I had some people calling me a shill on my previous video, which is kind of funny, but also understandable because I was very enthusiastic about plasticity and I failed to mention some of the other downsides about the product. I do genuinely enjoy using plasticity, but like I said, there are some downsides. Okay, so first and probably the biggest issue with plasticity is the fact that it's not parametric, meaning there is no history or timeline that you can go back to to make changes later on in the design. Take for instance this Nintendo Switch dock I just made. This design is completely done, but say I wanted to change the size of the holes for the magnets. I would have to manually go in, create a new sketch, cut out a bigger hole, close it up, and combine it. Whereas in Fusion, all I would have to do is open up the sketch and change the dimensions. Now I've found workarounds for this in Plasticity by creating copies of my designs, but again, it would just be much easier if Plasticity had a timeline like Fusion. The second problem that I miss from Fusion is the lack of sectional analysis. If you don't know what sectional analysis is, it's essentially just a way to see inside of your design or object. This came in handy for me a lot in Fusion. I would use it to check the holes I cut for magnets, I would check the tolerances between parts, and it's just great to have to fully understand how your object is coming along, and it also gives you a great idea of how it's going to be 3D printed. Now if we come to plasticity, this is their sectional analysis. It's called X-Ray, and if I toggle it on, you can see what it does. Yeah, not much. It just shows you the edges on the inside that are not visible. I much prefer Fusion's sectional analysis. The third and last problem with plasticity has to do with how sketches and curves are organized. Naturally, when I'm working on a design, I will start to accumulate a lot of sketches. And in plasticity, each sketch or curve you make gets filed under the curves dropdown. From there, you can rename them, group them into folders, or delete them if you don't need them. Now this works, but it definitely takes more effort than Fusion. And to be honest, because it takes more effort, my sketches tend to not get organized. In Fusion, when you make a sketch and finish it, it saves whatever you did in the sketch into its own individual file. At least that's how I understand it. And that file also goes on the timeline as well, just in case you need to make changes later on. This will make your life a little bit easier compared to plasticity because in a way your sketches are being organized automatically. So those are the three biggest problems I have with plasticity. Of course, there's probably more, but those are the three features I miss the most. So the question is, am I going to be leaving plasticity for fusion? And the answer is no. Although I do miss those features that I just stated, a huge benefit that keeps me using plasticity is just the ease at which I can create complex designs compared to Fusion. It's just so much less of a headache to create complex designs. Now, if I need to make changes or edits to a design that I've already done, 
then I'm definitely going to be missing fusion and I'm going to be crying a little bit on the inside. The two other reasons that keep me using plasticity are the performance and the price. It runs great on my computer and it's way less than fusion for commercial use. Now, just because the software works for me doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. So my best advice is to try out a bunch of them and you're gonna learn really quickly what you like and don't like. That's it for now. I never expected that previous video to get so many views. So that's why I made this video to address some of the stuff that I missed. Anyways, thank you for watching.